What up YouTube? It is your boy All About The Sneakers back with another unboxing and review video for you guys. Now today as you can tell from the thumbnail as well as the title of the video, that is correct guys, we are unboxing the Air Jordan 1 Chicago, better known as Lost and Found. Now guys, this was an extremely tough to cop release, but an extremely sought after anticipated release on top of that, which I feel is what contributed to this sneaker being tough to cop, as well as a lot of other variables, such as what happened months ago back in Memphis, where some of the Nike trailers were looted and a lot of pairs were stolen, not just this particular release, but some other releases as well. And it seems like every release that was stolen from that situation happens to be a tough to cop release. Such is what we noticed with the Air Jordan 4 black canvas. But that just being one of the variables, and even though there were a lot of pairs made, the fact that that happened back then did drive the hype up even more because when people have those early pairs, the prices shot up way back. And they have come down some since then, but not extremely down because we really didn't know what to expect with this release. It's an iconic Chicago Bulls colorway, the very first Air Jordan that put the Air Jordans on the map. So therefore, yes, the hype is there. But also there was big issues with some of the raffles as well as with sneakers app, very tough for some people to get in, including myself. I was not able to hit on hardly any pairs on raffles and could not enter in sneakers. I was actually logged in at one point. As soon as the time for the drop hit, I could not enter the draw and then got kicked out as well as my girl did and a lot of other people in the sneaker community. Now, some people were able to get in, but I could not log back in, unfortunately, for hours. But I do know some people did get W. So, hey, big ups to all of you guys who got W's on the sneakers app, all of you guys who got W's on the JD Finish Line Reserves as well as the other foot sites that did raffles, tough release, weird release, the toughest release in sneaker history to my knowledge or to my experience. Very, very crazy, but hey, I'm glad to get the pairs I've gotten. Although unfortunately they are not my preferred size. One of them is my secondary size, which I'm waiting on, which that is a nine and a half. Still looking to size swap on these pairs for a size 10, but the pair I will be reviewing today is an eight and a half, a little bit smaller than what I like to review on the channel, but I have done some GSs here, so no big deal. That's very close, but it's still a men's pair. However, guys, comment below and let me know the success rate on you guys copping this sneaker. Now, the resale value is still quite up and I believe it will shoot up down the line. So guys, if you can, try and get a pair for resale if possible, even if that means someone that you know kind of just hooks you up. I mean, I highly doubt that will happen, but it's possible. And keep your eye peeled for restocks and late shipments as I'm sure there are still pairs floating around for retail. Just gotta wait and be prepared for those drops. However, before we go any further, if you're new to the channel or if you're not, make sure you smash that like, subscribe, and share button and make sure you hit that notification bell so you can stay up to date on future release videos. Now I do have to admit guys with this pair I'm not as impressed as I was hoping for and maybe that's controversial some people may agree some may disagree but I just feel like this is an average sneaker with an iconic look there were different variations of this shoe to release in the past and re-release as well and I hear some of those variations were closer to the OG release that released in 1985 some weren't but I feel like this one is possibly close I'm not too sure I never had any of those pairs. I was not an Air Jordan 1 fan at the time. Now it is the most significant sneaker in my collection in terms of volume and I'm a huge fan now. So luckily I was able to get the OG Iconic Chicago but again, little bit of variations here that don't pan out to be the exact OG which is where we get lost and found. Nike's not calling that. They're calling it the Chicago. So we're gonna run with Chicago on this one. However, without further ado guys, let's go ahead and jump right into it. Alright guys, as you can see here, I was able to secure this pair at finish line. Big us finish line for the W on this one. I greatly appreciate 
check it. However, guys, as you can see here, we do have the box in hand, and we do get this old school look to the box, which I really adore. As you can see on the lower section of the box, we have that black with Nike branding, and the black is sort of faded. As you can see, the box is sort of distorted, just going around the edges as if it's been bumped around. It's old, it's starting to wear off. And we get that same old school look here on the lid, which is more of the traditional Nike lid in orange with white Nike branding. Again, we have worn edges on the lid. Unfortunately, my lid is a little banged up. A hey, finish line, get your crap together. Tell your employees, quit banging the boxes up, man. And it may not be their fault, maybe the shipper's fault, but somebody's banging boxes and I'm not happy about it. We do get more Nike branding going around the box. And on one side of the box, we do have stickers that resemble an old school shop that sells shoes where the prices were just kind of stuck on the box versus actually having a size sticker. But we also do have our size sticker. And I'll get a little closer, you guys, so you can see that those are actual stickers on the box that can be peeled off, I do believe, as you can feel that if you rub your fingernail across it just thought I'd mention that detail because when I saw images of the box I thought maybe that was printed on there but no it's actual stickers and the size sticker reads Air Jordan 1 retro high OG the colorway is varsity black cell muslin this is a men's US size eight and a half not my personal size and the suggested retail value is 180 US dollars now I am surprised about the price point 180 US dollars they could have easily bumped this one up to 190 maybe even 200 which would have been a little bit of a stretch but I can see them doing that with this being such an iconic colorway and how the hype was on this sneaker, especially after pairs were stolen from Memphis. But fortunately, they did not do that. They kept it at the 180 price point, which, hey, we can't go wrong there. Gotta be happy about that one. However, let's see what we have under the lid. All right, guys, taking the lid off on this one. As you can see, we do have our takeoff lid. Underneath the box, we have that cardboard. As you can see, I have a little bit of creasing. Again, the lid is a little damaged, but we also have a lot number right there. And let me get my receipt out of the way. All right, guys, flipping the tissue paper up. As you can see, we do have this newspaper-like tissue paper, which I think is very cool. It has a lot of historic Air Jordan branding. Very, very nice. I wish the prices on the tissue paper were what the prices are today. Unfortunately, that is not the case. We also get our double layer white tissue paper as well we also have that green sticker inside of the box so guys make sure all of this stuff is in your box so you can somewhat verify that you may have an authentic pair now you may have to look up under both of your shoes pull the paper out whatever but you will find this receipt hopefully if no one's taking it out of your box this is an old school light receipt that does come with it I think this is very dope for the presentation as you can see we have Sandy Bros Sports Depot which is basically just a mom-and-pop kind of shop that sold shoes back in the day giving us that old school look very very clean now just looking at other people's pairs prior to me getting my own I did think that that was a card stock but it's not it's actually a receipt very thin can be torn so if you want to keep that for nostalgic purposes hey man keep it safe because it is flimsy just standard carbon fiber paper and let's go ahead and get the shoe out and there we have it guys the Air Jordan 1 high OG my bad wrong shoe guys I'll be darn man that is quite that looks very similar <clears throat> my apologies guys sorry about that all right and there we have it the air jordan one high og chicago better known as lost and found now guys this is a very very clean sneaker again iconic sneaker in my opinion again glad to have this in the collection now let's go ahead and do a quick 360 on the shoe And again, my apologies for the mix up guys. I accidentally pulled the wrong shoe out of the box on purpose. <laughs> Oxymoron, yeah, I know. But this shoe here, guys, is essentially this shoe here. Not much of a difference at all, except for the color on the sneaker. Practically everywhere you have vault on this sneaker, you have red on this sneaker. So yes, guys, iconic OG Chicago is practically the Air Jordan 1 vault or visionaire. I mean, come on, man. And this is where I say I'm not extremely impressed. Again, this is probably controversial. Some of you are probably like, what the heck, bro? What are you even talking about? This shoe is fire. But personally, for me in terms of material I was expecting a lot more again branding packaging all of that stuff is great but at the end of the day we're here for the product the actual sneaker and I'm just not highly impressed I'm not extremely let down but I'm not highly impressed and on that note let's go ahead and go over the sneaker here in depth starting with our outsole as you can see we do get red on our outsole traditional to the OG but there's a little bit of a switch up which we'll go over here shortly however moving along to the midsole here guys we do have that cell like midsole very clean gives it that old school 
vintage look. Now it's not extremely sale. I think if it would have been a little bit more sale, that would have gave it even more of a vintage look. This is more of a light complected sale, but it still does give it that OG look, keeping it more on the white side. Moving on up here to the mid panel, as you can see, we do have a white mid panel with cracked leather here for that crackle application that Nike is applying to the sneakers. I'll get a little close. Hopefully you guys can see that there. It's not significant in that area, but it is there. We also get red going around our toe cap, eye stay, as well as our heel and ankle piece. And that is varsity red guys, not cracked leather on that area, more traditional to the OG, very clean on the color blocking. We also get a black swoosh here guys. And on up to our collar piece, we do get that black crackled leather. Very, very nice. Giving it that old school nostalgic look as if this sneaker was just sitting and started to deteriorate over the years. Now looking at the Air Jordan ball and wing logo here guys, we do have that embossed on our ankle piece in black, traditional to the OG, very, very clean. But other than that guys, if you've seen an Air Jordan 1, you've seen them all. This one is no different, just an iconic OG colorway, the very first to drop in 1985 to put Air Jordan sneakers on the map. But that pretty much wraps it up for the lateral side of the shoe. Moving on onto the medial side of the shoe, we get a very similar look as we got on the lateral side, just minus that Air Jordan ball and wing logo. Moving along. Taking a look at the shoe from the top down, as you can see, we do have that sale midsole again, red on our toe cap, white on our toe box, and get a little close again, that is that same crackle leather that we had on the mid panel. Again, not significant there. Have our perforated holes as well. Now this is a bit of a switch up here on the laces, guys. We do get white laces as well as black laces, both in place. In those bottom eyelids, Nike has no longer been giving us the bag laces like they used to that dangle off the side of the shoe. They've been giving us little recycled cardboard boxes with laces inside, but on this one, they did something different. I think they're trying to throw off the replicas, UA pairs, bootlegs, whatever you want to call it, by lacing the two bottom laces with the laces versus however they're doing it on those pairs, which probably vary. How we do get this very vintage-like nylon tongue in sale color, which I'm sure the OGs are just white, so this is more of an aged look. And on up to the top of the tongue, we get that varsity red tag with Nike Air branding in white. And guys, on that note, I do want to point out a slight difference that I noticed with that Nike branding on the tongue. All right, so if you look at this one, you do have an old school Nike swoosh on there. I mean, it is fat and chunky, and then it slims down in the top area of the swoosh or the tail, should I say. And this is probably not the best comparison, but we do have the vault here again, and it is very sleek on that stitching. Sorry guys, I know this is gonna be tough to see, but this is a sleek swoosh in comparison to this almost unorthodox, disoriented type of swoosh, just an old school look. So y'all noticed that, and I was like, hey man, what is what in the heck is going on? This doesn't look like the typical swoosh that I'm used to, but again, I guess that's some more nostalgic stuff that they're doing with this pair. I don't know if you guys even noticed that, but I thought I'd go ahead and point it out. Again, big fat, weird looking swoosh, but I guess that's OG. Maybe some of you guys can compare it to your OG pairs if you have. Cover onto the rear of the shoe. Again, we do get that red on our outsole, sail midsole, red going up the back and leather on our heel, our tab, as well as our ankle piece, and then more of that black cracked leather on the back on our Achilles heel area of the collar. And as you can see, that crackled leather is very significant. So if you guys notice any pairs that is not that significant it's likely a fake and some of the fake pairs don't have as much of a significant look they cannot duplicate it 100 to my knowledge as i've seen on some comparison videos so i thought i'd point that out as well but other than that a very iconic look from the rear of the sneaker moving along all right since we're going on to the interior guys i thought i'd show you how the laces are just kind of tied in here together make sure your pairs are like this so you can verify that they are possibly authentic we also have some tissue paper stuffed inside there guys no more cardboard shoe trees i'm not too sure why Nike can't do recycled cardboard shoe trees. I would prefer that because it does help the shoe keep its shape while it's sitting in the box and this paper is just eh, whatever. So Nike, if you're listening, we prefer the cardboard shoe trees, or at least I do, and I'm sure a lot of other people do as well. So, hey, can we get back to that? A recycled one? Something? Fingers crossed. However, we do get this black mesh sock liner here. We also get that text jargon on the back of the tongue in white, and then we also have our size tag on the side wall. But that pretty much wraps it up for the interior. Moving along. All right, guys, and last but not least, onto the outsole. Again, we have that all over varsity red outsole, but we do have a little bit of a mix up here, guys, as it looks like the outsole is a little faded or maybe it's stepped in some powder. Maybe the white powder that we notice on old school pairs just kind of forming on the sneaker is already on this outsole. Giving it that vintage look, that is the change up that I wanted to mention in terms of the outsole that is different from the traditional, but I do think that's a good look. I wouldn't have been opposed to just having the red outsole minus that, uh, whatever, not a big deal. But for nostalgic purposes of this sneaker I think is very dope and all of these different variations on this shoe is probably what's going to make this shoot up down the line but that does wrap it up for the outsole of the shoe moving along all right guys and once again you just saw right here on all about the sneakers the Air Jordan 1 Chicago better known as La 
lost and found, once known as the Chicago Reimagined. Again, a very, very clean sneaker. Glad to have this one in the collection. Again, I will be happy with my nine and a half once it gets here, so fingers crossed that it makes it here safe. However, let me know if you guys did go after this one, how you feel about the sneaker after seeing it on the channel. If you kind of like me where, uh, you know, it's the visionaire with red instead of vault, or if you're more like, hey, this is the iconic OG. Had to have this one. This is fire. This is dope. Nike's top tier quality on the sneaker. I mean, if that's you, more power to you guys. For me, it's just a subpar Air Jordan 1 with an OG iconic colorway, but I do think the materials could have been a lot more premium than they are. However, still a dope, solid sneaker overall. Digging it a lot. Glad to have it in the collection. Now, once again, if you're new to the channel or if you're not, make sure you smash that like, subscribe, and share button, and make sure you hit that notification bell so you can stay up to date on future release videos. Now, when you guys get a chance, head over to IG and follow me at all about the sneaker spell exactly the way it is here on the channel with the Z on the end instead of an S. I greatly appreciate it. I'll also have that linked in the description below. Now, I do want to thank you guys, as always, for tuning in and rocking with your boy. As you know, I rock with you guys 1,000%. But I did want to mention, guys, big, big thank you to my subscribers. All of you guys, man, we did hit the 3K subscriber mark, and we are on our way to 4K, guys. The goal is 5K. Would say by the end of the year, but that doesn't seem attainable since we are already approaching the end of the year. So hopefully we'll get there sometime next year. 5K, guys, is the goal, and then we'll push forward. But I do want to thank all of you guys who have subscribed to the channel, man. I can't thank you enough. 3K subscribers. Can't believe it. Never thought I'd get this far. But we are here now. So big ups to you guys. Much love. I appreciate it 1,000%. However, that is all I have for you guys today on this episode. Until the next episode, keep keeping it all about the sneakers. Once again, it is your boy, All About the Sneakers, signing off. Until the next episode, I will catch you guys later. Salute. I'm out.